Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Forum of the Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells here. We have a lot of interesting topics today. And now we would like to talk about hydrogen from wind power, promising storage and fuel option. And I would like to announce to you my guests here on stage, the Deputy Head of Institute and Scientific Coordinator, Institute of Energy and Climate Research from the Forschungszentrum Jülich, Dr. Bernd Immons. Please come to me, Dr. Immons. Thank you very much for being with me. Please have a seat. Yeah, and as you heard, we are talking about the hydrogen from wind power, promising storage and fuel option. And whenever you would like to participate in this talk, just raise your hand and I'll come with a microphone right to you. Dr. Evans, uh, first of all, you're coming from the Forschungszentrum Jülich, one of the largest research centers in Europe. Formerly, it was quite uh, well known for the research in atomic power plants. Nowadays, it has changed a little bit. You're now concentrating on uh, health, energy, environment, and information. But uh, energy is a very important part in, it, in your work, isn't it? Yes, you're right. And uh, energy is a uh, part of our work which uh, still is uh, increasing and uh, that's uh, very good for us. We are working on this uh, topic, uh, especially focused on fuel cells, but uh, nowadays uh, we also uh, look for PEM electrolyzers as uh, one topic uh, and another uh, very beginning uh, topic is uh, the research in uh, batteries, batteries and uh, uh, in combination with the uh, PEM electrolyzer an um, additional hydrogen topic is uh, we are looking for special um, aspects in uh, distributing uh, hydrogen. For example, there is one uh, PhD thesis uh, which uh, works with the topic uh, how can I distribute hydrogen in pipelines? So it seems quite interesting to me. It's maybe three or four years ago you couldn't say the word hydrogen here anymore because everybody was talking about fuel cells, fuel cells, fuel cells. We don't need hydrogen. But that has changed completely now because hydrogen is such a good storage system for renewables, isn't it? Yes, hydrogen is essential for uh, renewable energy use because uh, hydrogen has the option uh, to uh, deliver a very efficient uh, and uh, a very efficient uh, energy storage with a high power density. And uh, also uh, the direct use of hydrogen enables us to uh, reduce the CO2 emission uh, very uh, effective. So the idea is to use uh, wind and solar power, well, first wind power and then solar power. Wind power is probably stronger. Uh, at, at the peak times, uh, when we, we produce a surplus and electricity, to uh, change this electricity into hydrogen. Is that so easy? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if it is easy, it would be done, but... Uh, I it's not easy yet. Okay, you, <laughs> yes. you make it easy. <laughs> uh, we are still working on uh, this track, uh, and uh, what we uh, want to do is to uh, r make the uh, necessary research and development work to enable electrolyzers to produce hydrogen from the electric energy which comes from the big wind power plants. And uh, to, to reach this goal, we have to make the electrolyzers uh, dynamic in its uh, operation. We have to make it uh, for special times uh, uh, able to go in an overload and uh, we have to uh, stretch the uh, operation, uh, the, the lifetime of the electrolyzer. And but, but last but not least, yeah. we have to reduce the cost of, of the course, electrolyzer. Yeah. We have to talk about the cost as well. But, uh, but to un understand the principle, 
this is quite easy. You just need the, the electricity, an electrolyzer, and some water. And then you can produce hydrogen. It's, well, that's, that's the basic facts. But the problem is that the elect electricity that comes from renewables is fluctuating so much. I think you have the electrolyzer to cope with that. Yes, uh, the electrolyzer should be able to operate in a mode which is given by the uh, solar power plant, by the wind power plant. And uh, we, we have to, to uh, realize an uh, operation mode which is from the electrolyzer side, not the normal operation mode today. But uh, I think it's possible to, to uh, um, make well, with some um, technical uh, advances, uh, with some, some technical uh, um, um, uh, detail work, uh, electrolyzer able to operate in a very dynamic mode. There, there are two kinds of electrolyzers, as far as I know. There are alkaline electrolyzers and PEM electrolyzers. Alkaline electrolyzers are probably the cheapest one on the market, but they are not so dynamic like PEM, are they? You're right. In the moment, alkaline electrolyzers are cheaper. Uh, this, is fr this has different reasons. Uh, one reason is... Uh, you, you have to use for PEM electrolyzers noble metal uh, in the electrodes. And um, one aspect to reduce the cost of PEM electrolyzers is to uh, reduce the amount uh, of uh, noble metal or to reduce it totally. So we're talking about platinum, which is needed in a PEM electrolyzer as a catalyst. And you believe it's possible to get rid of the platinum and still uh, the PEM electrolyzer will work? There are concepts uh, existing to, uh, uh, to reduce the uh, noble metal content of the electrodes uh, to zero. That would be a big step towards yeah. lower costs. Of course, you have to, to reach that one. But also, you have to think about large-scale PEM electrolyzers. Electrolyzers now on the market are very small uh, for, for small amounts. If you're talking about you know, uh, powering Germany with hydrogen, uh, you need really large-scale electrolyzers, PEM electrolyzers. Yes, if we uh, think uh, in the direction to combine big wind power parks with electrolyzers, we have to go in uh, the uh, uh, several megawatt class of electrolyzers. And especially PEM electrolyzers, uh, I think, are able to realize uh, this power class and uh, uh, realize this power class also in uh, combination with an um, a very low um, use of material. Good. So I would like to open this discussion. If you have any questions to Dr. Emons, just raise your hand. I'll be with the microphone right with you and you can discuss with him directly. Otherwise, I continue to discuss with you, Dr. Emons. Uh, of course, when we produce the hydrogen, we have to store it. You, you, we don't use it immediately because we produce it when there's no electricity needed at the moment. Um, you said it has a, a high mass, a high um, uh, um, power uh, density, but uh, not volumetric. It has a problem because it's a volumetric so, so big. It has to be compressed then after producing it. Yes, but... Um if you compare it with uh, other uh, possibilities like uh, battery, you have a uh, uh, power density which is high, uh, uh, four to six uh, uh, times higher uh, in, in the case of an, uh, storage in a large uh, uh, cavern, for example, salt cavern. Uh, with a pressure between approximately uh, 30 or 100 bars. Okay, 
Okay. So that's that's your idea. We we need these caverns. They are existing already. We have a lot of caverns storing natural gas yeah. in Germany. Uh, we we need new caverns for hydrogen then, and then store the hydrogen down in the in the earth. Isn't that a little bit dangerous also to have so much hydrogen beneath our feet? So you you told us uh, we have experience in uh, storing uh, natural gas in these caverns and there is no special uh, accident or uh, danger uh, um, uh, exists. Uh, um, and I think this is a very useful way to store hydrogen very um, um, dangerous uh, less and uh, with uh, high power density and um, I think uh, the position of this uh, storage in the northern part of, of uh, Germany is uh, uh, very um, uh, optimal for the use of wind power which is uh, focusing also in the northern part of Germany. That's right, that, that's a good uh, by incidence, they are both there, caverns and the wind. Um, but there was uh, a lot of uh, protests in, in the last years when they said, well, we need caverns to store uh, carbon dioxide, so this uh, CCS system, the carbon capture and storage system, and uh, um, politicians have decided not, not to use the caverns at that anymore. So do you expect also some protests for if we uh, use it for hydrogen, these caverns? So that's a point. We, we, we are researchers and uh, that is a point we are no, not looking for. But uh, uh, if you look for the storage uh, and the position of such a uh, cavern uh, storage, you uh, can um, choose the position so that there is no um, no no public uh, um, yeah, not, not so many houses and yes. so many people living so around. I think uh, the 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 main focus should be to to choice uh, remote areas for these uh, cabins. And that's possible because you you make these cabins. They are they are being made in in the salty ground. Yes, uh, you told it. Uh, they are used for natural gas and uh, um, also. There is uh, an uh, use to to get the salt out, mm -hmm. and uh, these caverns uh, are uh, a, a typical um, um, uh, product of our industri okay. industrial work. So. But let's go one step further. When we need the hydrogen back, what should we use it for? For well. Uh, producing ele electricity again, may maybe with fuel cells, or what do you think about it? That's, that's a key issue, but because uh, if you look for the uh, best way to use this hydrogen, um, I would say use it directly for uh, fuel cell vehicles as a fuel. Because there are two reasons to do that. First of all, in this case, to use it as fuel in fuel cell uh, vehicles, you can get the biggest uh, uh, reduce uh, effect in CO2. Second, you can get the highest amount of money for the hydrogen. The other possibility is and this is also in discussion, to convert it in methane and put it into the uh, gas grid. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, you are not able to reduce the CO2 effect in such a way you can do it as a fuel, mm -hmm. hydrogen as fuel. And second, you cannot get so much money from this hydrogen because you get money from this for this hydrogen Only as natural in a gas, price yeah. uh, value of natural gas. That's right. You, uh, the idea you're talking about is to put the hydrogen into the gas grid, the normal gas grid, 
and then uh, take it out again. But if you take it out, it's only natural gas mixed with hydrogen. And uh, this is not so effective in the end. But it has the charm that you don't need the caverns, you don't need uh, the transportation system because the, the gas grid is all over Germany. How do you think about transporting your hydrogen, we're thinking of the hydrogen in the caverns, to the filling stations? How do you manage that? So the, the transport in, in the uh, um, middle and long term uh, should go via pipelines. In the short term, like today, you have to do it by a uh, big uh, track uh, and uh, you, you have to do it uh, to, do the, to do it efficient as uh, liquid hydrogen. But this is not the, uh, the way it should be done in, in the end. If you liquefy hydrogen, you lose about a third of its uh, power. So it's still a problem of effici efficiency. You say you need new pipelines throughout Germany. I think that, that is the, the, the best way to do. Yes. Or we just skip the natural gas and say, well, we can use the, the natural gas grid for our hydrogen now. Uh, maybe that uh, partly uh, this is uh, an option, but we also need the uh, natural gas grid and we, we need a natural gas as uh, the buffer for the time where we have an, uh, um, a lack of, of uh, electricity via wind power or other uh, renewable energy sources. Dr. Emmons, this is all very interesting, I think, and we could talk for hours now, but we are already a run out of our time. So I would like to mention one thing more, that there's an international conference. Uh, um, you're uh, participating on energy process engineering in June 3 to 6 the next year uh, in Frankfurt. Uh, there you will discuss all these items very thoroughly, won't you? Yes, the uh, scope of this conference is to make a one-day plenary where from all over the world uh, a speaker can pre present their concepts which are focusing on maybe an energy concept for a city, maybe an energy concept for a region or an island or a country or Maybe there are uh, existing concepts uh, which are uh, going uh, around the global. And uh, this we want to discuss on the first day. And the two uh, days uh, after that, we want to discuss the, um, the special technologies which are necessary to realize these concepts. All these renewables like wind, solar, geothermy, waves, uh, and all these, these things that gives us, well, the energy of the future. I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Emmons, for this interesting talk. And who, uh, who wants to uh, continue this talk with you, please visit Dr. Emmons at the booth of Forschungszentrum Jülich, which is just, just right next to our forum, and see the expertise of Forschungszentrum Jülich in all these different fields of fuel cells and electrolyzers you can experience is over there. I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Emmons, for this interesting talk and you for your attention. Thank you again. And I would like to tell you that in a few minutes' time we will continue our program here on stage with uh, Baxi Innotech. We're expecting Guido Gummert here, Managing Director of Baxi Innotech, talking about power, heat and living and energy revolution with fuel cells. So please stay tuned. We start in a minute. Thank you.